to um, the old portal window. I see the customization that I had done before. Let's go back and let's find out if we can if we can determine why I'm not seeing my AnyConnect. Let's go ahead and come on back over here. Let's go to Remote Access. Here's my AnyConnect connection profile, which is enabled. And we take a look at it. And I'm just kind of flipping through to see if I see anything. The portal page should use default customization. No Cisco secure desktop. Our alias is AnyConnect. We're doing AAA for authentication. We're using AnyPool. Enable the SSL VPN client protocol. The group policy is AnyConnect. And if we edit that group policy, we can see our address pools. We can make changes to that if we desire to. DNS and WINS. Some more options we can take a look at here. Split tunneling. Browser. Let's take a look at the SSL VPN client. So the default post login selection should be to down. Let's let's make it download. Let's force it to download the SSL VPN client after they've logged in. And let's see if that forces this client. I still think it's maybe some cache, but let's try. Let's log back on. Do user one, Cisco, and we're still not being forced. And we're still being put in the engineering at Ascolta customization. So I am definitely caching all of this. I clear my history. Let's try it from another browser. Let's try it from Firefox. And let's see if Firefox is going to be a little nicer to us. Okay, so I'll accept the certificate. The one other thing that could be happening here is the username. So we'll log in here. And again, engineering at a sculptor, which should not be happening. So let's do this. Let's take a look at our user. Let's go to our device management, user accounts. And here's what's happening. You see this VPN group policy here with ENG applied to it? This user is being pushed into the engineering group regardless of any connect being applied. Let's go ahead and add a different user and force them into my any connect. We'll do user two with Cisco. And on the VPN policy, we're going to force them into any connect. So I'll apply that. This should take care of the problem. See, there's multiple ways to end up in a group and get a portal applied to you. Let's log out here. So it wasn't caching. I was wrong there after all. Let's do user2, Cisco. Now, there we go. Now there we, remember, we forced it to launch the AnyConnect client. So now I go ahead and trust this. We can see we're going to run this Java applet, which is going to install my AnyConnect for me. Now, I can remove this requirement to force the install after the post login. But for now, it's OK. We'll take it. And wait while the connection is established. And then down here in the bottom, we can see the little uh, AnyConnect is disconnected right now. 
So we're waiting while it installs and establishes, and eventually that should go away and tell us that we're connected. So we'll give them a moment while they're communicating. Remember, they're going to pass information about IP addresses from pool, NAT0 configuration, and so on. And again, if we can't give an address from a pool, then we're in trouble. Okay, so my connection's established. I'll come on down here and I'll open my AnyConnect and I'll click on, see I can see 10.02.6.70 is my address. I click on details. I can see all the traffic that's uh, transport information and so on. If I go to route details, I can see everything is going to be tunneled. So at this point, I should be able to open up PuTTY and then SSH, oops, that's not where I want to go. Let's open up PuTTY and let's SSH through this tunnel. Let's go to statistics so we can watch these statistics increment to 10.0.206.10, port 22. We'll accept the certificate there. We'll log in as B. Carroll Cisco. And there we go. I am on, on that server through my full tunnel access. Now, while all of this is happening, one of the things that we probably want to be aware of is our ability to monitor. So let's come on over here. Let's go to monitoring. And then under monitoring, what I want to do is go to VPN, and then I want to go to uh, sessions. And then under sessions, I'm going to filter based on uh, SSL VPN clients. There's user 2 who's connected. Now, remember, I'm still connected to the web VPN portal. So if I go to clientless SSL VPN, I have a, a client that I never logged out for user one. I just closed it. Um, I can go ahead and log that user out there. Let's go back to our SSL entry. Let's go ahead and notice the protocol encryption is clientless SSL tunnel uh, DTLS. Now, when we... Uh, we can get into DTLS later, but essentially, here's what's happening. DTLS is taking TCP traffic that's being put inside of TLS, which is also TCP, and it's taking the TLS and it's turning it into UDP. So now I'm taking TCP and putting it inside of a UDP header, so there's no requirement to do a double resend of traffic if a packet drops. Now the reason I say that that's beneficial for voice is because if I have a UDP packet that goes inside of a TCP TLS header, or even think about IPsec, if I put it inside of IPsec, um, then it's not being handled like a UDP would be as real time. So I think you'll find that this is um, much more uh, beneficial when it comes to your real time applications. Uh, the one other thing that I can show you, we'll go to the command line here for this, is show vpn session db and we'll uh, throw on the tag there uh, detail and then I want to look for my uh, svc and there I can see user 2's connection uh, their assigned IP address and all the details I can see they have come across client lists I can see the SSL tunnel, I can see the DTLS information. If I were doing any network admission control or NAC, I can see that as well. All right, so that's, uh, that's it for my demo there of um, you know, the AnyConnect. Hopefully you found that useful.